if I handed you a hundred dollars today, right now, and you had to give me two hundred dollars back by tomorrow morning, what would you do? My dear, my dear, God. life or death, like no joke. Oh, life or this death. Is serious. Well, I'd probably tell someone I'm going to die if I don't get two hundred dollars. I need someone to give me another hundred. <laughs> that, that's actually the first time anybody said that one that, that's really good i did a whole poll about this question and no one said that i like yeah, it yeah you know, i it, without any i mean i'd find my h- most highest valuable skill and i'd cold knock the crap out of every door until someone bought whatever that skill was mm-hmm. you know so i don't know like a website redesign or something basic and but that that's that that'd be a stressful situation to be in um, yeah, like I don't actually need the hundred dollars though. Yeah. Let's like, say, you know, you did need it and you had to get this done. Otherwise someone is coming for you. Well, I'd probably just run some Facebook ads to a niche industry and solve a pain for them. I made, um, I've got, somebody asked me about how to make money fast. Yeah. And he, he's like, I need money. And then I started doing some, then I started looking into this and I found that according to the American payroll association, they surveyed like 29,000 people and they found that 74% of them, basically three fourths people would be in trouble if they didn't get their next paycheck. That is wild, right? So three out of four people, if they don't get their next paycheck are in trouble. So I was like, okay, I'll just show people how to make money fast. So, Um, I threw up a Facebook ad towards Mm -hmm. massage therapists and I offered to give them a follow-up system so they can stay in touch with all their massage clients. And I had 22 leads in less than less than 12 hours and three to seven of them all interested in buying. And um, since I was busy, I didn't sell them all, but I sold two or three of them and uh, made some money and gave them a follow-up campaign to stay in touch with their clients and yeah and for everybody uh tuning in listening in dane maxwell just so you could at least uh put a name to the face or to the voice uh check him out at startfromzero.com as well as his podcast start from zero podcast and you uh you you have a gift with that right you uh you just started showing people um how to make money right and but but you didn't get there uh overnight there were failures and uh quite a few of them Mm -hmm. do you want to dig in into how how this mindset changed because you know going from being a failure to now helping everybody like how How does that just happen how do you define failure getting to the point where you are about to give up you're about to step back into what you were doing before and otherwise you're thinking about calling it quits just on everything. Being a failure doesn't feel good. It's really, really debilitating and it can, it shuts my brain down and it's an awful experience. If you believe that you are, if being a failure is a state and it's a thought and you recognize it as a thought and a feeling, but you don't actually believe it, then it's just an experience in your body where you just kind of screwed something up. But if you actually believe it as to who you are, then that's when it gets to be a slippery slope. And you actually are the only person that can choose that. And when you realize it's a choice, but you don't know it's a choice until you have the metacognition the, the ability to see your own thoughts meta on your thoughts until you can see them and then recognize those thoughts aren't who you are. So anyway, um, failures. So failure to me is like maybe a product doesn't work. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe someone doesn't buy what I thought they would. Then I get super pissed, you know, I'm like, bah! Ah! and then I like allow that pissed off, feeling to like permeate my whole body. So I do not make that mistake again. Mm -hmm. Um, So I did that a number of times with, with product ideas. Um, And then just 
yeah, I guess that's how I'd answer that. Does that answer the question? Yeah. I mean, was there a time when you recall specifically that many, you were like, I mean, oh yeah, many times. I mean, it happens a lot. You know, if, if you, um, it takes, uh, it takes like, um, so we've got a course, for example, where we teach people how to build like a $20,000 per month business by setting mm-hmm. up a Facebook advertising agency. You create selling systems for businesses. Those businesses grow and they pay you. It's a, it's a great business. It's, it's like if I, if that business would have been around when I had started, I, oh, I mean, my, the mentor in there, he's, he's like, looking at inking a deal that will bring in a hundred grand a month just for that one client. Like he'll pay, he'll make a hundred grand a month. It's for a, a nationwide contract. Um, and he's only running the Facebook marketing. Um, he's good. He's, con- he's like working on a hundred thousand dollar per month deal mm-hmm. um, in a baby boomer niche. And um, he has to run nine to 10 different ads to find a winner. And he's good. Like nine to 10 failed ads to find a winner. And he's good. Yeah. He's actually good. So like if you're not even good at business Mm -hmm. and you like going to need to do it more than nine times. I mean, I failed at 11 different ideas. I tried like guitar videos. I tried referral postcards for realtors. I tried all kinds of different things. I tried to cop my, the most painful was a contact database I made for realtors. That was $9 a month. And, I was sitting out there with a realtor at a bar and I was like, so how do you keep in touch with your contacts? She's like, I don't. Um, How do you keep track of them? Oh, yellow piece of paper. And you know, (laughs) my car is like, do you ever, you you ever lose that yellow piece of paper? Yeah. Well, would you like to like have a a system to like, like, you know, put it on your phone or something. And so it's not, you don't lose it. And she's like, yeah, I'd be interested. How much? And it's like nine bucks a month. And she's like, no. And I was like, you mother Mary Joseph. What? Mary Joseph of, of, of Moses. And then I watched her buy $80 of drinks right next to like, she's filled a tab for $80 of drinks. Mm-hmm. And I was like, ah, that humanity. <laughs> so, Talk so about I, priorities there. Yeah. So, I mean, I stopped and, you know, I built the product that, you know, I built the whole product. It was called client lunchbox. It was a email only contact database that a realtor mm. could use without having to log in. It would email them the list of their clients every day and they could look at them all and make sure they're in touch with all of them. And, they could e- email back and add context all through email because the big, the biggest pain point with a realtor was they didn't want to log into a system. So I created an email only thing. I went out and found a developer to build it. I didn't write any of the code myself. I own companies. I don't work in them. I build businesses I don't have to work in. Um, I have a fully self-managed SaaS business that's multi-million, low multi-million. Uh, it's got a CEO. It runs. I don't I don't work in it. I work zero hours a week. I've got it better than Tim Ferriss did in his book. Tim had to work four. I work zero, not trying to compete maybe a little, but I really respect not him. At all. I really respect him. And um, one day hope to have that man's approval, but not before my own. And so anyway, I've got all this stuff that I've done and failed at and et cetera. And you know, the guy is good and he's got nine or 10 attempts at an ad. So if you're not good and you try three things and give up, you're stupid. You know, you're literally being stupid. You're being dumb. If you try three times and give up, like, are you kidding me? How many times Mm -hmm. did, let's look at this. Okay, check it out. Okay, I'm going to Google this right now. How many times did Dr. Seuss fail? It's a good question. He got turned down 27 times. Dr. Seuss had 27 rejections. If that's you and you've given up after three, you are a coward, my friend. I feel like you knew that one. You just needed no, to look I think, it up. I think it was like a no? hundred. I think I thought it was a hundred. I'm going to still get them out. 20, 27 rejections. If you, if that had been you and you given up at three, how many kids are not now reading Dr. Seuss? You're being a coward. It's a good way to put it. You're being a coward. But like, how do you, how do you explain though? If you, if you just start to realize that it's not for you, like you obviously you're in it. You're, you're pretty, you're pretty deep into it. I'm pretty yeah. deep into it too now, but there's, there's people that, that can't handle it and that maybe just shouldn't because it's no, not for everybody. It's, no, it's not easy. No, no. People can handle it just fine. Yeah. Yeah. What about, what about, you know, they already have the stable life. You know, people come to me and tell me they have the stable life. They, they have the family they're, they're itching for something more, but they have, yeah, you tell you, you look at you look them straight in the face and you say, so you're actually afraid of being fully happy. 
That's all it is. You're telling me that you're telling me that if you start a business and you have all this freedom and how good that's going to feel and you don't want to do it because you're stable, you're actually admitting that you don't want to be fully happy. That's all it is. So then you've got to like, like this is, this is the God's honest truth, man. To, in my opinion, is like we have an issue as a society, as a species with being happy. Yes, we do. We do. It's very difficult. Like I've struggled with happiness for so much in my life until I realized that happiness is who I already am. And I just forgot that I am. Freedom is not something I need to go and find. Freedom is right here in this moment by being honest about where I'm at. And my life changed the day I was honest. I was at a real, I was at a, I was at a, uh, worked at Ernst and Young as an auditor. And I was <laughs> like, I, I literally said to the full table of partners and like this whole dinner. And I was like, is anybody actually happy here? And they were like, what did this kid just ask? And I was fired. And like, I was honest. And like, people are like, how do you become oh, successful? Amazing. How do you become successful? Like, what's the secret, dude? It starts with you being honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. That's all. If you're absolutely honest with yourself and then you're actually congruent with that honesty and it's congruent and you're like, you know what? I'm not happy. And so what happens is, Hey, I've got a stable life and da da da. Will you give me the desire to do it? No, you find your own desire. I'm not here to give you desire. Your life is your own. You only fool yourself at the end of the day. You're not fooling anybody but yourself. So you need to be absolutely like wake up crystal clear. You've got this life to live. Every day is precious. You're exchanging your own time for money. You're exchanging the most valuable resource. You will never get back the day you're living right now. It will never give back to you, but yet you're giving it to a company to build someone else's dream, to build wealth for them. And and if you're an employee and you like that and you like that certainty and safety, that's not what I'm, that's not who I'm talking to. I'm talking to the person who's tired of building someone else's dream, who's tired of being told when to wake up, when to go to lunch, when to go home. They want to be their own leader of their own life. And that's hard. And like, to me, it just takes like with kindness and compassion, like crap, I'm being a coward. And it's not like, Hey, like some shameful thing that I'm trying, like I'm trying to, to, to say, it's like, you know what? I don't have the courage that it takes. You know what? I need to, I need some courage. And so when you look at this and you say, you know what? I'm not happy with my life and I'm okay with it. That's what you're saying in your actions. If you're, if you're in a job and you don't want to change, you're saying, I'm not happy with my life and I'm okay not being happy. And then you say, listen, I'm not happy with my life and I am not okay with this. That honesty will be all you really need because you could start a Shopify store, an Amazon store, you could do Facebook ads, you could do eBay, you could do software as a service, you could sell eBooks, you could sell membership websites, you could do lead gen for businesses, you could do content marketing business, you could do any business on the planet and be successful at it as long as you're freaking honest with yourself. I'm unhappy and I'm not okay. But what your actions say, so now this is where it takes some compassion because there are certain, yeah. based on what I've learned about this, there's, there's only really one thing we need to look at mm-hmm. in terms of like creating this, this success. And it's that, so, okay, before I go there, Dr. Seuss, 27 times. Now, let, I want to let myself feel that because when I let that land in me, I can feel my own self-doubt. I can yeah. feel it. I, I don't believe in myself to the degree that I want to. You know, I, I've had a very difficult time accepting the success that I created. I, I, I created this extraordinary success and I just backed away from it. Like I went into hiding after I did, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't feel comfortable with it because I had this issue come up, which is the only thing that I think really matters, which is, um, what do we secretly think of ourselves? Yeah. And then what I secretly thought of myself and, and still do, but don't believe as strongly is I thought I was a piece of shit. And I actually had people treat me that way. They would Mm -hmm. spit on me growing up. I would get abused and tortured growing up. And people would even like, you know, joke, joke and call me a turd. Like, like it wasn't like an accident that I arrived at feeling like thinking I was a piece of shit. It was conditioned. Um, and so like when we understand that, like we learn our, we learn our sense of worth, we learn it, we learn it by how we're treated. So it's very scary to say we have a dream. Like, like like, for most of us, it's terrifying to say we have a dream. Oh, it's the hardest thing I ever did. 
Right. Crick coming up with one and leaving. By far. Right. And you did it. But th- there is another side to it. You know, it's not always rainbows and butterflies either. You know, I, I, you've gone through these tough, dark times and obviously you got past it. Not everybody could handle it though. Like, you know, is, is it worth I, it at all times? Um, it's always worth it. I mean, you don't, you don't ever lose a damn thing if you're following your heart. You mentioned though, there was the moments that you almost, that you almost broke that you, you know, couldn't handle yourself. Can you kind of go deeper into that? Like what emotions yeah, you felt, yeah, what you felt yeah, during those times? I mean, it was terrible. Like what I want more than anything is like, listen, if I was in front of someone and they said they were scared, so I'll answer this. I'll try to answer answer this complete question. So if someone is in front of me and they're like, I'm scared and I just want to start this business, my hand would go on their back and I would say, I absolutely believe in you. And I know you can do this. I, I really do. I've seen it happen countless times. I've got 15 students now that are millionaires of mine. Many of them are at the top of their industry. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, there are students that, like, couldn't even afford my program. They borrowed their girlfriend's credit card. And now, like, they'll do, like, 10 plus million a year. And they were in the garage. And they were, like, cell phone salesmen. Like, I know what it takes. And, And anybody, really, with the not anybody but almost anybody we've actually done um, personality research on the successful students Mm -hmm. so we can actually show people how to modify their personality there's a book called snap how to change your personality in 30 days and you can actually cultivate we've got some some data on this now but i always want to say like i regret saying coward a bunch earlier because that's not the place I want to inspire people from. And that's what worked for me, but that's not how I want to live moving forward. So I do apologize about that. And I mean, everybody's different, right? It's how you take it. Yeah. And, and I, I don't usually say it on shows. So it's maybe someone, maybe it helps someone, but at the same time, like if someone was in front of me, like, like, listen, you just need the right train. Like you don't have to be smart. You don't have to be intelligent. You just need to be really, really driven and you need to be resolved to not give up. And if you have those, if you have those things, you can actually plug your brain into a process that will bring out brilliance. You can follow a process. The pro, it's not about how smart you think you are. It's not about, not about. It's, it, the process brings out the brilliance if you plug into the right process. Okay, so I mean, I just want to say that um, for the the feelings I felt, I just I did. I just felt like a piece of shit, so I I went and hid. Um, the feelings were sorrow and grief and dis despair and they were terrible. The, the, the big thing that shifted was I saw them and see them as mm-hmm. thoughts. I don't see them as I, you, what you do. Like it's, 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 it's a very amazing framework. If you start to apply um, two things real, but not true to your thoughts or feelings, that thoughts, real failure, but it's not true. If you hold a frame and real, but not true for your thoughts, you could start to free yourself. And then also noticing a thought instead of believing a thought. Am I noticing this thought or believing it? So I have, I still have those thoughts. Yeah. They just, they're just noticed now instead of believed. So what do you tell yourself when it happens? Like you get that. You don't have to tell yourself anything. So it just kind of comes by and goes. Um, we could just stay there. Like you you don't, um, so (laughs) The concept of identity, like uh, how, how I think of myself in an mm-hmm. unconscious way, like how do we privately and secretly think of ourselves? If you are, for example, unhappy with your life and now you're realizing that you've been okay being unhappy. And so now you're starting to probably contemplate, um, you know, that's kind of odd. I never realized that. Right. <laughs> and then now you could ask yourself, what kind of person would put themselves in that situation. And now you start to get real honest with yourself because you're like, what kind of person would put themselves in a situation where they're unhappy and okay with it? Mm, Someone that doesn't believe in themselves. Uh, I don't believe in myself. And now you're like, whoa, I I don't believe in myself. And now you're at this thought where you're like, crap, 
It's really simple. I don't believe in myself. And so let me close my Chrome there. Um, yeah, I, I don't believe in myself. And now with compassion, like, okay. And dude, I totally relate. I, I still struggle with that one. Like I, um, I'll build these great businesses and then I struggle to um, stay connected to them because they represent so much success and greatness that it doesn't jive with my unconscious identity. Now, instead of, so like um, this course that we have where we teach people the Facebook ad business, yeah. really like that course. It's brand new. We've got this guy that teaches it. Um, it's really fun. It's a serious price point. So we don't attract people that drain us. It's like a minimum, it's like five grand first payments, three grand for this. So like uh -huh. it's someone who has the discipline to save money. It's someone who has an income. They come in as they come in generally resourceful. It's not like we're selling a $200 product to someone who's really conditioned into scarcity based thinking and they're stuck in survival and they can't think straight because they're, they're reacting to all of life because they live in the state of survival. But that's a different customer that needs oh, yeah. a different process, which I would be honored to help. And we do just this product is a really interesting thing. Now this guy is so successful with Facebook ads. He's so good at it that I get on calls with him and we start to record content and I'll notice that I literally start shutting down in front of him. Like I'll shut down and then I'm like, crap, dude, I can't even sustain being with this guy right now. But so I, I push through and then I go with my life coach and I say, listen, here's the next identity. But it's, it's, it's all that's going down there that shut down. It's a response to an identity getting triggered. That's all this is. It's very simple. It's identity, who I think I am getting triggered. That's it. That's all that we need to focus on. We don't need to try harder. I don't need to talk to myself differently. I don't need to do any of these things. I just need to recognize and notice identity. So um, now that I know that we have a laser focus, this is really all we need to, what do we secretly think of ourselves? How can we see it clearly and hold it like a friend without trying to talk to it, without trying to parent it with it? Just, you just hold yeah. it as real, but not true. And you, and you realize that the awareness that holds it's way beyond what we think. We are not what we think we are. We're not what we think we are. Even if we think positively of ourselves, even those positive thoughts is not who we are. We're so much more than that. So, but I, I, I don't always know this cause I get triggered. So yeah. I'm, I'm with the guy and I get shut down. I get started getting shut down. I'm like, crap, crap. This sucks. Oh God. He's going to see it. He's going to see I'm a fraud. He's going to see I suck. I right. see this. Number and one question. Number one thought. I'm a fraud. I'm a thought. I'm a fraud. Something's wrong with me. Something's broken. You know, something's wrong with me is, is uh, such an innocent, innocent thought when you think about um, how much we've been manipulated by advertisers and that stuff impacts you. Um, my girlfriend played a joke on me where she put um, flower advertisements around the house that I never even saw. But all of a sudden on Valentine's Day, I got her flowers. And then a week later, she told me, she's like, yeah, you know, I, I, um, I tried an experiment and I like just put these flower advertisements around the house. It's like, oh my God. I was like, oh crap. I'm wow. in the like it were like this. Dude, I better hope my fiance doesn't, doesn't hear that one. <laughs> Damn, that's, that's a good yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 um, it was so weird. Like even the flower bouquet was like the ones in the ads. And I was wondering why I was doing it, but I was doing it. And, and now wow. that now I bought my grandma flowers and now I, cause I was, she was so happy. And then I, and then I, I bought her flowers again the other day and it was just like giving her flowers and watching her smile and like being like, Whoa, I'm actually scared to love the woman that I love. Like I'm scared she won't accept my love. And I give her the flowers and she smiles and accepts my love. And I'm like, Whoa, that's an identity getting triggered. Mm -hmm. So, Failure on this. I feel like he's going to see I'm a fraud. And, you know, all he does is looks back at me with these loving, beaming eyes. He's a very loving man. So I get on a call with my coach and I'm like, dude, I'm getting identity triggered like crazy and we need to work on this. And so it's so uncomfortable about 45 minutes. And then what came through deep and strong was you're a failure. And that's so that was so deep in the unconscious that I couldn't see it, but I could just watch myself shut down. Mm -hmm. so um after i did that i got on the call with him next time and it was way easier and the only thing i needed to work on was the identity the identity getting triggered and so um 
when we realized this and then, so we, we do this identity based work at start from zero. Cause it's just, I mean, it's, we, we were, we're, we're loyal to what works. And so, um, but identity based work is essentially like, so if you're, um, unhappy and you're okay with it, now you want to look at the identity of who you've been believing you are. That would be a person that would put themselves in that situation. Mm -hmm. And you will need to be very honest uh, about it. Um, and then it becomes very, usually it's very simple. It's like very simple words. You know what crap? I just haven't believed in myself and it's that simple. And so now when you go to start taking action and start believing in yourself, it kind of can feel like death inside of you. You're like, Oh God, I've actually got to work hard. Oh no. I was hoping for something easier. Right. And then you, you say that, but you honor that voice with compassion. You're like, Oh God, I got to work hard. Oh, but like hold that with love. And then you're like, okay, well, I'm going to work hard then. And you know, it's just how much does your dream matter to you? How much do you matter to yourself? You know, Those are good, very deep questions. Definitely are. Yeah. And is yeah. this, how much do you matter to yourself? And you said you, you have a process, right? You take people through. Do you have like the magic formula? That you well, I, I, I do, but it's not mine. Mm -hmm. um, Passed down or. Yeah. So others? I found. So after, after tons of years, I found a gentleman from Asheville, North Carolina, who used to be a very successful day trader. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he found the secret to feeling incredibly good incredible sense of well-being like he can just stare at trees and he's blissed out and imagine how much freedom you'd have to like build something if you had that much well-being you're not yeah. compulsive you're most of us are compulsively driven to like prove our worth including Next myself dollar. including myself right yeah. and so um imagine if that wasn't a compulsion but you're like literally just wanting to help someone you know like i really want to like i mean i like you like success um, i'm going to break the news success isn't personal it doesn't mean anything about you. It doesn't. It'll mean something about the identity that thinks, but it's not really you. To the part of you that knows more than that, that can hear this, it doesn't matter to you. It's not personal. But yet, look at how we glorify Elon Musk and glorify mm -hmm. all these successful achievers. They get mass recognition and adoration. The part that feels worthless starts to create a strategy to get that kind of recognition, exposure, or success, because we think it's actually personal. It's not. The reason that we really want to be successful is not to prove something. And, and I, my, that's only my opinion. And not to like, like have this, yeah, look what I did. Yes. It's because being successful and abundant feels really damn good. It just feels good. Like if you're successful and abundant and you can go get that car you want, or you can do this thing, you can go to, you can just go on a trip. Like it's not to show off. It really is. Your e there's part of your ego slash identity slash identity is really the, is really the crux of this. The identity will be like, yeah, look what I did. Look at the picture of me on Facebook and stuff. That's not going to make you happy. It may feel okay. What, what will make you happy is being happy and being happy is a result of realizing we already are. The part of us, like if you look at a child that comes in, they're happy for no reason. You want to find out how to be happy for no reason, how to have joy for no reason. Unconditional happiness, and unconditional joy will render you unstoppable. It will render you actually powerful. That's a real power. So that's been my whole mission. Mm -hmm. I finally, I've, I'm finally pocketing in and out of it and finding it. Um, and it was by meeting this day trader who stopped doing day trading. And now he just spends all his time and he finds like, the most at risk people of suicide, depression, mm -hmm. and, and um, like feeding disorders. And what he does is he gets with them and he basically shows them how, how they are in that moment is perfectly okay. It's okay that you want to be bulimic. It's okay that you want to kill yourself. It's okay that you want to do this. That's, that doesn't mean anything about you. And what happens is when they realize it's okay, like what happens with me, like we're like, oh, something's not, nothing's wrong with me. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that either. And then they feel that. And then what usually happens is um, people end up 
hanging out with the intense longing or the search for relief instead of like searching for the relief they just they're like oh i have a desire for relief i have a desire to be out of this terrible situation and instead of acting that feeling out they just drop in and they make friends with that feeling they make friends with the feeling of the desire it's the easy way it's the easy way right i mean you start to feel good giving in you start to feel it, it is it's so much in, in some sense it can be very difficult and mm-hmm. in contrast to the other way it certainly is easier now the step-by-step system to do this that's what we have a we have a course that i i, I like it's like this guy's just a random dude in nashville and nobody knows about him so i found him and i've we've put his thing into a step-by-step system and course mm-hmm. and it's really affordable it's it's at like i think it's a we're putting the URL together now, but it's make friends with the mind.com. Hmm. And so the fast, like yeah, the fastest way to do this in terms of the internal dialogue is to find the very worst thing that we have in our mind, the very worst thing, and then make friends with it. And then all the other things don't really matter nearly as much. And the way to find the worst thing is to sit still and do nothing. Meditate, right? Yeah. That's yeah. Uh... Is that something you do a lot? Yes, as much as I can. And I'm not good at it. I'm not that good at it. I don't have the identity of being good at it. Um, so what I, um, what I typically do is I like to do meditative mind on YouTube. But a lot of time, many, so like even like right now, so I can feel, right now I can notice that I feel um, somewhat agitated. Okay. Or not agitated, but um, upset. Um, am, I, am, I, am I upsetting you? Not at all. Not at all. Well, you are because you're giving me attention and to the part of my identity that doesn't like attention because it still feels worthless. Mm -hmm. That's where the upset's coming from. And just by naming it, like I'm actually starting to feel a little nauseous in my stomach. And I'm like, well, I'm getting attention from a man that I respect because I do respect you. And I'm like, well, man, I'm getting like, this man's giving me res- respect and attention. Well, attention, sorry, attention. And, you know, and, and um, so that can be a little bit uncomfortable to the identity. Yes. To the awareness that sees everything. Dude, we're just two bros hanging out. That's it, man. But like. Where are the beers t- at? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Seriously. But without the metacognition. Yeah. So um, like what he says to me is he said, you know, um, if we can make friends with the mind exactly where we are right now and let mm-hmm. everything be okay exactly as it is, we'll open up into a well-being. And then from that place of well-being, we, we find freedom right now. Um, so the last thing I'd say, so the step by step, there, there is a real step by step process to this. And um, it comes from building the skills of metacognition. And that takes some practice. But as the metacognition builds, then we start to notice these things that have been driving us. Um, So in terms of success with entrepreneurship, the desire for success with entrepreneurship, we need to be careful because the reason that I'm an entrepreneur now is because it feels really good to me. Like it's really, it just feels good. Like, Oh man, like I can look at my family Mm -hmm. and know that I can stroke a check for almost anything. And that just feels so, so good. Um, And so to me, it's family. And you know, my daughter's upstairs, my partner's upstairs, and I can go up and give them a a kiss or a hug after this. And I don't have to wait eight hours to see them if I'm at a job or something. And like, man, that, that's a real, real gift. And that is, and, and that's a, that's a big gift. And, and so, I want people hearing this to hear because our identities are so strong. We become very wealthy by solving very painful problems. The more painful the problem we solve, the wealthier we get. Like you've got that eco waste removal company. That stuff's really painful for people. It is like, like you don't, you can't, you can't like talk them out of that being painful. You're like, Oh, it's fine. You don't have to know that it's awful that that thing is there and they don't want it there. Like if you happen to have like a basement that floods, that's very painful. You know, if you happen to be wanting to get pregnant and you can't, it's extremely painful. Mm. 
extremely painful. And, and, and if you get into a car that's 110 degrees and there's no air conditioning and you get in, your body gets physiologically shocked by the heat. A survival mechanism gets triggered and you feel very, very uncomfortable. Like you feel like your health could be compromised. That's very painful. You're going to look and get your air conditioning fixed. But if it's like 195 degrees in the car and you're kind of lazy about it, yeah, you know, it's 95. It's like we can see you're in pain and we can see you're kind of stupid for, you know, like, but like until it gets to 110, it's an extreme pain. Then your body's like, I got to solve this. And so when you find those issues of pain, those are real gifts to build businesses around. So with that massage there, the how to make a thousand dollars in 24 hours. So we had, um, you know, I ended up, I ended up like selling three people at $300 and I had two other people that were really wet, ready, waiting to talk. So it was actually around a potential of $1,500 that I was able to bring in in about a single day. Oh, this is how, how you made a thousand dollars in 24 hours, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah, by actually helping someone. So like, um, a tr- like very, um, every business, almost every business has a universal problem with getting new customers. Mm-hmm. Uh, in addition to that, the almost every business is, and that's a very painful problem. Like a business that's not getting customers, their livelihood is threatened. Mm-hmm. Serious, painful issue. So if you went out and just studied um, systems for getting customers, customer acquisition strategies, books on how to get customers. And you just read that one thing. You'd be rich for the rest of your life. If you only, if you understand that stuff, cause you'll, you'll be, you'll be a master at the universal problem that every business faces, which is why I love the Facebook ads course. Cause it's not about Facebook ads. It's about learning how to build and create selling systems for businesses, which is the most critical aspect of a business is the selling of the product mm-hmm. and service. So that's, I love that business because you only come in and learn how to do that. You don't have to focus on all the other aspects of business, which allows the focus there. Um, but in the thousand dollars in 24 hours, other things businesses really struggle with almost universally is following up with their customers. Most massage therapists don't follow up with their clients. Hmm. So um, I was just getting a massage and I was like, Hey, do you have a follow up system for your clients? And she goes, no. And I was like, do never thought about that. One? Yeah. And I was like, do you want one? She's like, yeah, I do. It's like, would you like to talk on the phone about that sometime? Yeah. So I got on the phone with her and I sold her and um, I recorded that whole call and you can actually listen to that full sales call. It's like a zoom call where we're talking mm-hmm. back and forth and we're trying to find a price where she's happy and I'm happy. And cause she had a price over here and I had a price over here. And so we had to be creative to find the matching price and selling is a really noble very noble, high calling of love for your customer. It's not about um, gimmicks and things like this. It's really about, okay, what's your dream result? What would be a, what would be a fair price for you? Mm-hmm. And how can we see if we can make things work? If we can't, then we can't. That's okay. We don't work together. But if we can, maybe we can. And that's, sell, sales is about alignment and fit. And when you, under, when you understand that, you're like, okay, what's your dream? What do you really want? What are you willing to pay for that? Can we find a fit? Mm -hmm. Um, So um, I have that whole call recorded and it was really cool because I wanted to charge her like a hundred bucks a month, but she only wanted to pay 10. Where do we find this call? for? Um, for uh, uh, If you Google how to make a thousand dollars in 24 hours by actually helping someone, you can Google it. Okay. Um, And also I'll give you the 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 URL URL. because it'll be like startfromzero.com slash slash something. Actually, uh, Start from zero.com. I don't, I don't know yet. <laughs> it's, it goes live a few days after this. We'll find it. We'll yeah. Find but it. I'll, I'll have you, yeah. um, I'll have you put a link to it under the show notes. Um, but that's only one of the videos. The rest of the videos in this guide are okay. Like now she paid, how do mm-hmm. I actually make the product? So, Oh, so you had no products when you sold her? No, you know, you don't want to have a product. You don't, you want to sell first. <laughs> well, what did you give her as the turnaround time? I don't know, a couple weeks. You just said a couple weeks, I'll be in touch. Yeah. I mean, uh, I saw, I mean, the, I, 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 you want to sell stuff before you have it. Wait, this, this actually happened, right? Oh, hundred percent. Oh, like, yeah. like you actually made the product. Okay. Yeah, definitely. I made the product, okay. sold her. She gave me 300 bucks and, and, uh, made the product for her. And what did you end up making? So, um, we will follow up system for her to stay in touch with their clients you know, messages that she could send all of her past clients. But here's, this is where 
I really love doing this because um, first we're like, well, let's send them all follow-up things through Facebook Messenger. Let's send follow-up things through email marketing. Let's send the follow-ups through text messaging. Mm -hmm. But like, here's where the beginning entrepreneur, now remember that I've got 15 millionaire students at least, many of them at the top of their field. Like number one fastest growing company in the physical therapy space, Inc. 5000 fastest growing company. These are my students. They don't do that by, um, they, they, well, they do that by learning this particular way of thinking, which is to, it's not about how we make the product. It is, but it, that's not where my focus is. I don't think about, I'd say it's like 15% of my mental capacity is the how. The 85% is she wants more clients without having to advertise. That's the result she wants. She wants to get more business without having to run ads. So for example, if you go Google, um, how often does someone buy a home? You'll find the average person moves like once every eight to 11 years or something like this. So then if you took 500 people divided by the average time to move, it, the, the, the number turns out to, if you, if you if as, as a realtor, if you stayed in touch with 500 people, you'd sell 14 homes a year because those 500 people would be moving every eight to later. years. Yeah. So literally all you need to do is stay in touch with 500 people and you could sell a little more than one home a month. The average realtor doesn't <laughs> sell that many homes. I mean, that's all they would have to do, but I know this because of proper business training. So, and, and most realtors, most realtors know this and still won't do it, but they'd be happy to pay someone else to do it for them. So there's actually a service. I think they do more than $10 million a year and they write a Google doc, Word doc and send it to the realtors to send to their clients. And all you gotta do is put a Word doc together once a month. Wow. $10 million per year business. Wow. And, and the realtors are really happy to yeah. pay for it. So, um, you know, the how is her clients are gonna get some kind of message every month. How we fulfill it, fully depends on what will most greatly give her the result. Mm -hmm. So what will provide the greatest result of more clients without advertising? It's, it, it, is it messenger? Is it, is it email? Is it text? So we look to numbers now. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is all in video. I've got the, the whole blog post is, is a comprehensive course that is well worth paying for, but it's all yeah, free. It's great stuff. And, and, the re, and my selfish reason for doing it is I've got a book coming out and that book's going to follow you all the way down that page. So, you know, buy the book. We'll look at the book. Look at the excerpt. If you like the excerpt, then buy the book. Don't buy the book until yeah. you know if you like it. So check the excerpt out first. But as you scroll down this blog, it's just going to be like, learn how to think this way. You know, download this or buy this book. And so that's, um, that's but you know, I try to make myself seem greedier than I am. And I'm sure I do have natural greed and I'm to a financial point now where I just love seeing people thrive. Mm -hmm. And I also do like charging for it, but it's really more like, it's, it's, it's something I would do for free if I had to, because seeing people succeed is a huge, like it's a, it's a, it's a very, very pleasurable feeling. Um, anyway, um, so the, 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 the creation, so um, business can be broken down very simply yeah. into three things clear customer, a clear result, and a clear mechanism. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's all you need to think about to be in business. Who's my clear customer? What's my clear result? What's my clear mechanism? So that's kind of like the structure of what you go off of. Yeah. And clear. if you have that, mm -hmm. you have a very stable foundation. You can stack a lot on it and you can build a billion dollar company with only those three things so as the foundation. You need, of course, way more stuff, but like the, the, the core thing, like Weight Watchers, Women in their 40s, clear result, lose 10 pounds in a week is usually what they say. The clear mechanism is counting points. Mm -hmm. um, clear result, clear, clear customer, clear result, clear mechanism. Keep in mind, Weight Watchers didn't even create an innovative product. They just reorganized caloric information and turned it into a point system that women could understand. Right. Curious right. though, how, what did you end up choosing for, for the yeah. masseuse? What did, the, well, what, what, that, I'm, 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 instead of just giving you an answer, um, uh, I'm, 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 I'm hanger. I'm, well, no, no, not at all. Instead of giving you an answer, I'm showing you how I arrived at that answer so you can do it a hundred times yourself. Okay. Um, so first we're aligning to the result that she wants. Mm -hmm. 
Now we have to decide between messenger, email, or text. Well, which one's gonna provide the greatest result? Well, now we need to step back and say, we got a clear customer and a clear result. The mechanism could be many. So we got a clear customer, someone that can't see. The clear result is they wanna be able to see clearly. They don't want glasses, they don't want contacts, they don't want LASIK. They wanna be able to see. They don't care about the mechanism, but as new entrepreneurs like, what's my idea, what's my idea, what's my idea, which is gonna keep you stuck there forever. Mm -hmm. And instead you look at what's a customer you can serve and what result do they want, and then you can be creative about the mechanism. So the mechanism doesn't really matter to the customer. So why should it matter to me? It doesn't. What matters is the customer gets the result. So I went to all this length and put together January 1st, January 15th, February 1st, February 15th, a full year follow-up thing for a massage therapist that would go out on very classy, high-tech uh, Facebook Messenger with a video of her in each message. And it was, I was insecure about the product, so I over-delivered on it. Oh, yeah. And then, Sounds like it. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was like, I really wanted to make sure it worked because it was based on insecurity because I didn't have any confidence. And so we put this whole thing together, but then I go into manychat.com, which is a Facebook messenger thing. And I start clicking around many chat to like try to put the follow-up sequence together. My brain's like, oh, this is really overwhelming. And identity wasn't like at really play there. It was just like, I don't want to take the time to learn this. Mm -hmm. So I found an agency and I paid some person in the Philippines, like uh, however much money, not much. And I put all the, 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 the follow up in a Google doc. And then I had them implement the Google doc and mini chat for me. I didn't even have to fulfill the product. I, I created the, I created the product, but fulfilling it, I did them. But then after all that work, I was thinking to myself, I don't think this is going to provide the greatest result. So I got all the way down with the campaigns, even implemented in messenger, but it's like, we're loyal to our customer. We love our customer. We want to serve them and make sure they are thrilled. They want more clients without having to advertise. Is this really the mechanism for this? Mm -hmm. No, it's not. So now we're going to switch over to text message marketing because if we look at the numbers, so this particular masseuse, and you're going to see this all in video. It's like every step is there for you to do. And you could, I give you the ad, I give you the ad copy, I give you the targeting, I give you the ad videos. So you can run this ad in an industry and start generating your own sales in a different niche than massage. It's all yours. And I'm able to be abundant like this because of the way that I think. And, and this, this allows real, real, a real sense of abundance. And don't get me wrong, I get triggered in scarcity all the time too and we have to retrain my mind into abundance. Now, um, we look at her numbers. I ask her, um, this is a whole video you get to watch. I say, so how many massages do you give a year? She gives about 960 massages a year. Wow. Right? I was, I, that was, I was like, wow. She was like, okay, it's 960 like, massages. Three a day, at least, almost three a day. Yeah, but that, that's not too bad when you break it down like that. Yeah, yeah. You're, doing, you're, doing, you're doing good there. Um, so um, we uh, then, like, I think about, like, okay, so how is she going to get people on Messenger? Well, at the end of every massage, we should say, hey, would you like to feel, or would you like to continue this, this good feeling off the massage table? Uh, yes, um, um, I've got uh, educational messages that can help keep you feeling good. Would you like to get those? And some of them will say yes, some will say no, and then she'll give them a URL that will automatically funnel them into a messenger sequence. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, feelgoodwithallison.com. So, and it just, uh, the domain's sole purpose is to forward into a messenger yes. um, thing. Um, but now of 960, I think she's lucky to get half of them on that messenger sequence. But you know what she has with every customer that comes in? She has their cell phone to schedule times and talk to. So instead of 460, she'll have 960 phone numbers. And then the message instead of on the 1st and 15th of every month is literally, happy January. I hope you're staying warm. Would you like a massage this month? And that's all it is. And it's at the 1st of every month. I would not mind getting that from my massage therapist. Yeah, so now it doesn't, 900, it doesn't sound too pushy. No, no. That's, so that's the biggest turnoff. It's super, super big turnoff. So now 960 people a year, now 960 texts a month go out. If she gets a 10% yes, which are all past clients, so it's not unreasonable, that's 96 more massages a month. If she gets 5% response to that text, that's 40 some new massages every month, all because she just asked. And that's really all it takes. So this is what I, but, but so the, the mechanism 
you get better at by practicing mechanism. And the way you get, so customer result mechanism, clear customer, clear result, let's brainstorm the mechanism. And the way we find the mechanism is we mistake our way into it. So we invest all this time to build this whole glorious Facebook messenger sequence with 60 second videos and all this stuff. And it's like, is this gonna provide the result? No, I don't think so. Let's go over to text. Now you combine that with the proper thinking of Frank, like, no, actually I've said everything. That's it. <laughs> no, I, uh, I don't think there's much else to add to that. That's, that's very, very nicely put. And it kind of, it's a full circle. It ended up being a failure, right? Quote unquote with the Facebook, but you found the solution through experimentation. Right now, imagine most people starting businesses don't even have customers in mind. Mm -hmm. There's not even a customer they're thinking about. So how in the world did you do anything? So here I am with a massage therapist, follow up, sell her, get money first, then we're committed to a result. Now we can experiment with mechanism to get there. What did she put down? What did you guys agree on? $300. So the way that we did this was, so, um, and you'll watch this all in the video. It's like a 50 minute sales video. But what, what I want people to understand is that price is a conversation. Price is a conversation. It's not a, it's not a, it's not like, all right, look, pay it. It's okay. Let's talk about this. What would the value be, et cetera. And I was like, okay, so I'm wanting to charge a hundred bucks a month. She's like, oh God, I only wanted to pay 10. And I was like, oh, I was like, well, what would the, like, what's the absolute most you would pay? She's like, oh, I don't know. Probably the most I'd pay is 30. And I was like 30 bucks, 30. Like, okay. That's not going to work for me. I was yeah, hoping no to way. get I was hoping, I was like, listen, I was hoping to get a hundred massage therapists at a hundred bucks a month and I'd make 10 grand a month. I wanted to get a hundred massage therapists, a hundred bucks a month, 10 grand a month and a hundred bucks a month for her to generate 45 more massages. But I didn't have those numbers at the time. I could have probably sold her a hundred a month if I had, but it's fine. What happened was um, I heard $30 a month and I was like, do I want $30 a month? I was like, okay, I want a hundred dollars a month. Okay, crap. So I was like, listen, I'll tell you what I'd be happy with. And you tell me if you like it. And I can't remember what I said after that. Um, but you can watch it. Please watch the video. But Blacked out. <laughs> well, it's just so many details to remember. I know. I know. But um, the, what ended up happening is I was like, okay, 30 bucks a month times 10, 300. You can probably pay 300. Um, I said, how would you feel about 300? And she said, I could do that. And so she sent me like $100 on a Venmo. Wait, 300 and, a month? No, 300 total. Oh, you had her do a, a total one-year payment? Yeah. No, I just $100 one. Here. So we um, never want to force the market to do something we don't want. So we just need to be creative. So what I did is I said $300 one time. So now um, for $300 one time, we're going to create a system for her to implement follow-up. And I was like, well, how am I going to get my 10 grand a month? If I want 10 grand a month and I'm selling it for 300. I was like, oh, I'll sell this as a course for other massage therapists they can pay $300 and get their own follow-up sequence too without having to pay any big monthly fees. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty good offer for a massage therapist. Now, if I run this advertising to massage therapists, I only need to get one sale a day to make 10 grand a month. So now um, I've got this. And so now I'll create a course that's like how to get more clients without having to pay for pesky advertising, special for massage therapists. And then I'll have an interview with Allison, the person I sold, and how she's continuing to get more clients without advertising through a follow-up. And they say, you guys, in one day of work, you can have a follow-up system for a year. And it's $300. And so now I can yeah. sell that as a course. Thinking and that's all, that's all in the guide. Thinking bigger picture right off the bat. Yeah, I think, yes. Yeah. So that's how, that's how that all went down. Well, that was a lot of, lot of great content, a lot of, lot of goodies and tidbits that I know the listeners will definitely use and hopefully uh, use actually in real life because that's, that's like straight up. You just took us from, you know, step A to step Z on how you uh, did this. And, and, uh, and, and, and I want to say like, this is repeatable a million ways from one. Yeah. I've got, I've got a seven figure software company that I almost did the same thing with, you mm -hmm. know, um, we've got a real estate company and they need to go paperless and they want to be a mobile office and be paperless. So now the mechanism is a software as a service product. I have no idea how to build that. So I go out and find a software developer to build it. And um, I negotiate with the software developer to get half his hourly rate so that he can get the future revenues of the product will pay him. 
Yes. And like, so like you can do all these things, and negotiate the product down. Right. And, and that's like now a 10 person team. And, and it does uh, a little over $2 million every year. And I don't ever work in it, but as it's, it doesn't matter. It's like um, real entrepreneurship. The real heart of entrepreneurship is what I've been trying to communicate with this. And this is a, the real heart of entrepreneurship is, is, is complete ease. It's complete abundance. It's free of struggle. It's free of stress. And it's free of you having to prove yourself. And it's free of you having to be an expert. And it's all the great things you probably dream you dreamed about, but maybe don't maybe gave up on those things are, definitely real nicely put and you survived i survived the first part of the show miro is now going to take off so see you later welcome to the round with no name because they're all taken but his evil twin miko is back no. we, are, we, we are now on to our listeners favorite segment of the show so what happens now is you get five seconds to initiate an answer we just want to know a little bit more about the real Dane Maxwell from startfromzero.com. So we don't want you thinking about this too much. Just throw out what your brain thinks first. You ready? All right. All right. Your favorite book? Think and Grow Rich. Classic, though I hear that one way too many times now. But I guess that's for a reason. Favorite movie? You know, the things that you hear over and over again doesn't make them any less special. Oh, that's true. There, it's there's, a very, there's a reason. There's a reason. There's a it's reason. Very, I, it's a very special book that is literally all you would ever need if you needed one book. It's, you, don't, you, don't, you don't need, you don't need you, to like. You're not the first person to say that either. <laughs> yeah, cool. That's, uh, there, there's, that book has just hit home with a lot of people. Do you have a confession? I have a confession, though. I haven't actually read that book. I read the thousand page version of it called Law of Success. There's a thousand page version of that book that Napoleon Hill wrote called Laws of Success. That's the one I read. I've, I don't think I came across that one. I'll have, take, I'll, have take, I'll have to take a look. There you go. I gave you something new. Okay, what's the next one? <laughs> your, what is your favorite movie? Gladiator. Another, another classic. Been a while. Got to watch that one again. I did a personality assessment on that, on that guy. Mm -hmm. like I, like, I like wrote about like, what do I love about Maximus? He's humble, powerful, family man, leader, respected the men in his army, like I like trustworthy. Like I like I like did an analysis on on that guy because he was such a moving character. And chances are he was vegan too. Really? Well, I don't know about him, but they did a whole study um, of back in the gladiators back in the day, and it came it came out that all of them actually most of them had uh, plant eating habits, like very plant based. And then none of them really ate meat or anything at all. Crazy. Which is, yeah, which, yeah, it's a whole that documentary, Game Changers on Netflix. You got to check oh, it out. Okay, it's okay. Crazy. Who, uh, who is the one person you have been most nervous to meet or interview with? Uh, any beautiful female celebrity, probably. Is there one specific? Uh, is there a Kylie Kardashian or something, some kind? Well, is there one that you've met or one that you ha were, were super nervous? Um, you had a big meeting, a big interview coming up? Nah. No, I, I, can, I can turn on a pretty confident state. But um, any, like uh, Kylie, Kylie Jenner, the 21-year-old yeah. billionaire, like I got rejected a ton by like beautiful women when I was younger. So that's that one. I, I still haven't recovered from that one. So like being nope. in front of like a young, beautiful woman like that is still so gets to me. Kills you, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, if you were stranded on an island, I'm preparing you here just in case. You don't know. There's a lot of stuff going on with this world. It's you're all alone. You got to bring one item with you. What is that one item? Can't be a person. Book. A book. Better be a big book. Uh, like a fiction, a fiction book, like a really, really like epic. Like I hope I can get lost in the world of huge series. Yeah, that's that's good. That's good. Though I feel like you would read that book so many times by by the end of it all, you'd be losing it. No, man. I um, I I I learn new inf every time I see new information, or sorry, every time I've seen information that I've seen a hundred times, I try mm -hmm. to read it like the first time I saw it. It's a good good way of looking at it. Yeah. So like, you know, a lot of folks, like I've already heard that before. It's like, are you even doing anything with that? No, but I already heard it before. It's like, okay, you're stupid. Like, don't be, don't be stupid. 
like new information you have seen before, but you're not doing anything with, you should probably do something with and or like, I recommend looking at stuff you've seen before with the br new brain every time and see if there's something new you haven't seen in it. It's so like, I would, you, I would it's read like it new. yeah, it's like when you watch a movie and stuff, second, third time, you notice a whole bunch of different things. Um, definitely, definitely a good point. How do you now on to kind of more serious topics? How do you drink your coffee? I don't drink coffee. Ooh, curveball. Tea. How do, you drink, <laughs> how do you drink your tea? I just drink as hot as I can and burn my mouth. No, I don't know. I just drink it normal. It's pretty slow. What kind? I don't know. Black tea? No. Green? The good flavor tea, like fruity, orangey, like cinnamon, that kind of stuff. Nice. Why no caffeine? Uh, no, caffeine is no, thank you. Gets you jittery or just against it health-wise? Fucking awful for you. Why do you say that? Some, I mean, some say that something, some live by it, die by it. Um, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to program my brain to be dependent on any, any chemical at all. Got it. Yeah. No, no, no prescription drugs. No, no caffeine. Like as close to nature as possible. If you had an unlimited amount of money right now and you could start up any business you wanted, it can't be one of the ones you have, but any business you wanted, what would it be? Um, there's a personality assessment called the Enneagram. Have you heard of that? Uh, I believe so, yeah. Okay, so it's a really cool personality assessment. There's nine types. It's, it's a spiritually based assessment that shows you how your ego boxes you in from your spiritual potential. Uh, and it's amazing and it's life-changing. And I would start a business that would be a nonprofit that would encourage um, children as soon as their personality is formed, age 12, whatever, to take their personality assessment and then it will show them great people in history that are just like them. So if you took that assessment, it'd be like, yo, do you know that you have the same personality as Albert Einstein? Do you know that you have the potential of Albert Einstein? Do you know you could be as great as him? Here is a comic book, story series, et cetera, of Albert Einstein's life so you can see how your type and his are very similar and how you could even do greater things than maybe even what is the one item every single day that you consume? Maybe you drink it, eat it, or you wear it, but there's one thing every day you can't go a day without. I really like nachos, man. So do you actually have nachos every single day? I'm definitely going to have some nachos today. <laughs> so that's a good one. I, I get some wild answers. This has got to be one of the, the wilder ones. So I, I, I just imagine you having like a nacho machine at your house and just like squirting that cheese all over. All the well, time. no, it's like, it would be like, I'll have like a Panchero's bowl or a Chipotle bowl and I'll dip chips in it. Like, it's like, like, like nachos, like the meat and the rice and the, yeah. oh, something man. that I could actually eat every day and not turn into a tar. I should not have asked this question. I'm fasting right now. I'm on day three, no eating. And wow. you, just, you just killed me, man. Oh, you just killed God. me. Well, Miko is out. Miro is back. You survived. I survived. Dane Maxwell, everybody. Start from zero.com. Be sure to check him out. His podcast as well. Start from zero podcast. Awesome. Awesome show. Great content. Great stuff. Thanks so much for kind of taking us through uh, that roller coaster of, you know, getting from point A to Z with, with a potential customer. Yeah. I appreciate you're your time and, and look forward to, uh, to what's to come. The, the mic is yours though. If you want to finish off with any, with any thoughts only, uh, thank you. Only, um, just please check out the guide and then, um, check out the free book excerpt and it'd mean the world to me if you got the book, but only cause you like it, not because I told you to get it. And it's all on your website, right? Start. Yeah. Start from zero.com. Zero. There'll be a link that says guides and then you can look at that look at that guide and you'll see a, a free book excerpt link on the guide. Perfect. Yep. It's all nicely laid out yourself, right there. Give yourself like a, give yourself like a week to like go through the guide. Like it's a whole new brain you'll be seeing. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Dan. You're welcome. Thank you, man. That is all for this episode of Boss to Boss. Your next step is to visit boss2boss.com, where you will find proven techniques followed by professionals to help you make that next step. Again, that is boss, the number two boss.com. And remember, the time is now. <laughs>